And on the day of the feast of St. Anne, and we'll be here again in, in England and Suffolk, in a little camp, uh, a little family camp, and we'll go along. And a few considerations, and probably some other goes to men. It says in the, the gift of knowledge, is a great gift of the Holy Ghost, and this knowledge is a gift by which we see God in things. And we're instructed to learn from the things of nature, and the things of nature God gives us to teach us about supernatural things. All things are used for our education. And Francis says in the sacred scriptures we mentioned multiple times, all you sluggard, look to the ant. Look to the ant and see that he works. And so that there is, we have to learn from the things of nature. We also we say that the devil goes around like a lion, seeking whom he ever may devour. We refer to him also as a wolf. He also speaks that we must be, as, as, as followers of Christ, as wise as serpents and simple as doves. And all throughout the sacred scripture we see the same God that made creation is the same God that made the supernatural. And that all these things are for our instruction that we can learn from the sacred things of nature about the supernatural life. And the supernatural life helps us also to understand the things of nature, because the same God that made the supernatural made the natural. And today a few considerations, and something actually just uh, uh, only something learned just only very recently, on the light of fireflies. We have, it is that uh, well, there are many creatures that have, that their body emits light. Of course, the most famous, the one that everyone knows are the fireflies. And only learn a little, actually just a little, uh, one of these science videos I just saw on the airplane coming over here, a little documentary on the nature of the animals that give light. And one of them is the firefly. The firefly in America, particularly the particular fireflies in Pennsylvania and all throughout the United States. But the fireflies, they emit light. And that they turn on a light bulb on and off, and that when the, 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 the female firefly, she emits one light. She turns on her light, and she turns it off. The male fireflies are flying around, and they see the female firefly turn on her light, and then exactly four seconds later, they respond by like a Morse code, light, 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 light. There are many species of fireflies. And each one has their own code, so that they don't get confused one with another. <clears throat> so the female then responds to the code of the male, and then she aims her light at, at the male, and then he begins to come towards her. So if one has a brighter light, or that she prefers, and he goes, he goes towards her. But there are many species of fireflies. <clears throat> and there's one particular firefly, Fireflies have in them the kind of toxins that are in their, in their bodies so that the other, other insects come to eat them, or birds come to eat them, they'll be poisoned and they don't like to eat them. And so but there is a particular kind of firefly that doesn't have these toxins naturally. And so this firefly, when she, the girl firefly, when she's sitting there, she sees another firefly of a different species fly by. And she imitates, she knows the signals of each of the species. And when she sees one of the species that's not her own fly by, she gives the female signal of that species, and the male fly by sees and responds. He then goes towards her. And when he arrives, he discovers that he becomes breakfast. <laughs> so he goes towards the female firefly. He thinks it's one of his own species. He recognizes the light. He recognizes the response of the light. He sees the other firefly, and he thinks that it's one of his own species, and he arrives, and she kills him and eats him alive. When she eats him alive, she gets his toxins that she cannot produce. And then she becomes, she gets the things that she's not able to produce these things herself, so she eats them and pulls them out of another. And the fact is also that, what is the purpose of light? What are the uses of light? St. Jerome speaks about the purposes of light and the uses of light. He says, one of the uses of light is defense. But here is another use of light, and that is deceit. But light can be used for deceit, and light can be used for destruction. And this kind of light 
is the light that we see in the greatest of all the angels. The angel that was the head of all the angels, who is called the bearer of light, Lucifer. He was the one that was to carry the light of truth, and the light of the divine knowledge, the light of the divine beauty, the light of the divine understanding of the whole universe. He was to carry that light to all of the other angels. But he decided that he would use his intelligence and use his light for another purpose. So light can be used for another purpose. We often say it's only a good thing to turn on the light. It's only a good thing to let others see the truth. Or to try to turn on the light. But what is this light? What is the purpose of light? Light is supposed to enlighten the world. For he is the light of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the light that enlightens all things. So we might see them in their beauty and see them as they're related to God. But when the devil has light, it's a different thing. His purpose is to imitate the light of another. And there'll always be something wrong with it, as we learn in, this, in, the, in, the, in the fourth rule of the Ignatian Exercises of the second week. The temptation under the appearance of good, where the devil can sometimes appear as an angel of light. He comes as an angel of light, and he can turn on the light, and he can look just like a good angel. And he can say beautiful things, and he can look holy. There was also a consideration just the other day, <clears throat> the wolves in sheep's clothing. The Saint, Saint Jerome says that the wolf in sheep's clothing, he wears a sheep's clothing, but it is not his natural clothing. Whereas a sheep wears sheep clothing, and it's natural clothing. So the wolf wears a sheep's clothing, it's not the natural clothing, and hence it easily is disturbed. And it, it, it doesn't react in the same way when it's touched. It doesn't grow. It doesn't have, it's always the same. The wolf in sheep's clothing. He's just putting on sheep's clothing so it doesn't grow. The, 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 uh, the, the, the wool doesn't grow and so on. It looks the same on the outside, but it never grows. It looks the same on the outside, but if you touch it, it reacts violently. Whereas a sheep, we know, when you touch a sheep, he's timid. He doesn't react in the same way. But you touch a wolf, and he reacts as a wolf. You touch a sheep, he reacts as a sheep. And when the wolf dresses in a sheep's clothing, he can look like a wolf. He looks just like a wolf, but when you touch him, he acts, or he looks like a sheep, rather. When you touch him, he acts like a wolf. <coughs> so this male firefly, he sees, the, he sees the, the light. It's the same light of his own species. He recognizes the light. Because he recognizes the light, he comes next to it. And when he arrives, he discovers it's not quite right. And he discovers that he gets eaten and destroyed. He, in fact, is going to his death. Now, there are souls in the, in, in the world, and they have increased in our times, but they are at all times, who believe that light is only to expose evil. And light is only to destroy others. That's what reporters do. Reporters are this kind of light. They want to shine the light on anyone who they can destroy, who they can draw in. Become friends of famous individuals, become friends of others, so that they can turn on the light. Aha, this man is an adulterer. This man is a, a whatever his sin may be, or be accused of sin falsely, or accused of sin truly. But the fact is, whether it be the sin of detraction, or whether it be the sin of, uh, of, uh, of calumny, what is the purpose of some souls to turn on the light? Because without it, when these particular fireflies, for instance, if they don't eat of the, all the fireflies of the other species, they won't live. The life depends on the destruction of fellow fireflies. And there are some souls in the supernatural life. There are many souls in this world who cannot live. They cannot exist. They cannot think. They cannot breathe. They can't have a conversation. They don't have any peace in their hearts unless they're able to destroy, unless they're able to turn on the light in order to bring others to destruction. And this is a very deep problem. And these souls that do this, they do it thinking they do a service to God. The time comes towards the end of time when there will be so much of this a man's enemies will be those of his own household. They're not going to be those on the outside. They're going to be those of his own household. Those who are of the household of the thief. 
Those are of the same family. They're going to turn on the light and turn on the signals and use the signals. One example of this, for instance, is Cardinal Ratzinger. Cardinal Ratzinger, who knows the language of the traditionalists, knows our signals, and he turns on the signals so that with all he said that the new mass is not, uh, is, is, the old mass was never abrogated. He speaks our language. He turns on the light. He acts like he knows our language. So we come close to him, and then he gobbles us up. He knows how to look more traditional. It is what the adult mass is, which has gobbled up thousands and hundreds of thousands of souls. They turn on the light to look like the tradition, but it's not the tradition. They turn on the light to look like Christ, but it's not Christ. And when you get close to it, you get close to that light, and you discover there's something wrong. And you get gobbled up. And souls are being pulled away from the truth. And souls are being pulled from the lies. So in the realm of doctrine, what do they do? Say words that sound Catholic. This is a communist tactic. Communists teach, use the words of the enemy and then change their meaning. Learn the ways of the enemy and then practice it and then lure the enemy into the trap. Make them think that you are the same and then eat them when they come close. This kind of destruction is in millions of ways today. One reason why our Lord says in the Gospel that there will come a time when the devil will deceive, if possible, even the elect. It looks like a firefly. It shines the light. It knows the signals. It doesn't appear to be in any way different until all of a sudden there comes a bite. And all of a sudden we're being destroyed. Now the devil, the God always allows there to be some signs. But one of the signs is, what is our light for? What do we use our light for? One of the great weaknesses of traditional Catholics is that many, most, many traditional Catholics are all looking for who the Bilderbergers are, who the bad guys are, who the communists are, who the communist infiltrators are. We want to know who all the bad guys are so that we can destroy them. And somehow by destroying all the bad guys, it makes us good. And somehow by destroying all the bad guys, it takes away troubles. But the fact is, those when the bad guys are destroyed, and God will destroy all the bad guys when the time of judgment comes anyway, they shall meet the judgment of Christ. If they don't repent of their sins, they shall meet the judgment of Christ. If they repent, then they shall become friends. But if they don't repent, they shall be judged and destroyed by God. And while it is necessary from time to time for us to point out this bad guy and that bad guy, and it is necessary from time to time to point out this, the, 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 we must point out the errors, of course, but, but we were looking, when we're looking at the individuals, we're looking for the individuals, we're often looking to destroy them. And somehow we believe that when we destroy a bad guy, when we destroy an evil one, when we rip, rip someone apart, it somehow gives us life. But it doesn't. It doesn't give us light. Everywhere in the Gospel, when we consider what it means to follow Christ, following Christ does not mean only to hate the devil. It doesn't mean to hate the bad guy. It doesn't mean to destroy others. Following Christ means building his kingdom, following the Gospel, and spreading the holy faith, living according to the life of virtue, following the words and teachings of Christ. And this is hard. It's like the two aspects of battle. One aspect of battle is to attack. And the other aspect of battle is to stay, sustain and build these two acts of the virtue of fortitude. To attack is easy. It happens quickly and then it's over. But to sustain the attacks of the enemies, to build slowly under fire, to keep rebuilding when things are torn down, this takes considerable energy. And we have to know what we're doing. The army that only shoots at the enemy and doesn't build fortresses, the army that doesn't spread its kingdom, spread its territory, build up supplies, and do positive things is an army that must eventually fall apart. And one of the traps of the devil is, you're a good traditional Catholic. You're a good conservative. If in America you follow Rush Limbaugh, where he is over here. You follow the guys who on the talk radio speak out against Obama and they speak out against the liberals, and they say how bad they are. 
and they speak out against the communists, and they speak out against the various bad people. And as long as you are voting Republican, and as long as you are fighting against the bad guys, well, then you're a good person. But this is not the case. Light is not for the purpose of destruction. Although light can be used as a defense, as Saint, as Saint Jerome says, light is a great defense for a city. You turn on the light, and when the enemy approaches, you can see him so that the enemy stays away, and so that you can destroy the enemy as he approaches. But to use light to attract the enemy, to use light to pull the enemy in close so that he can be eaten, this is not the right use of light. Light was not meant for deception, and yet the devil uses it for deception. There is another kind of shrimp that is loose in the ocean in the same documentary that shuts light so that it cannot be seen. Light is normally so you can be seen. But when the little shrimp swims to the ocean, the silhouette of the, of the shrimp can be seen, and so it gets eaten. So there is a certain shrimp that has rays of light, has, has uh, lines of light, and it emits light in such a way that it confuses the prey and it cannot see the shape of the fish. And so the light is used to confuse that the shape cannot be seen in unclear light. And also the, 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 the light is used to, to distract the enemy, that same firefly. So that firefly, if the male of the firefly will not come to it, well then she goes after other ones. And the main place that she eats fireflies is in spider webs. She finds another firefly who's been captured in a spider web, and the spider is and when the firefly starts to die, he no longer blinks his light, but it becomes a dull light. And when the female firefly of this one species sees that there's a dull light, she knows that a firefly has been captured in a web. She goes straight to the web and she lands on the edge of the web. She then takes her light and she shines it and blinds the spider. And she keeps shooting the light into the eyes of the spider. She then pulls the other firefly off of the uh, off of the of the web and steals it from the spider and then eats it. And so her light is used to drive away and confuse. Light being used to confuse the spider, and light being used so that she can steal the food and eat it. This is the kind of light of modern reporting. The light of modern research. The light of looking for the, the evil and confuse the enemy. Well, they confuse and confuse and confuse. That's why news is so popular. And news is used to deceive souls. There are many of our people that are addicted to the news. Absolutely addicted. Now, all they do is watch the news. It was better than watching pornography. It's better than watching bad movies. It's better than, than wasting time. I'm doing something valuable. I'm watching the news channel for 24 hours. What are you watching? Light that is being used to deceive. And light that is being used to placate the conscience. Bishop Sheen described the purpose of news 50 years ago, 60 years ago. When he said the purpose of news is to placate our pride. We turn on the lights. And we say, ah, oh, that man's an adulterer, that man's a traitor, that man's a wicked politician, that man is an evil priest, that man is an evil bishop, and an evil pope, and so on. Therefore, I'm pretty good. It is very dangerous, this kind of light. And there needs to be an examination of conscience. Yes, we must see the evil that is in the world around us. We have to have a certain awareness. We have to be aware that there are certain souls that we need to stay away from. That's true to a certain extent. But how much of our spirit and time is devoted to evil, deceptive, destructive light? That's what people are interested in. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, that which is in the heart of a man comes out through his mouth. What are the only things that we're interested in? What are the only things we discuss? Too much of evil, not enough of good. Too much of the spreading of wickedness, not enough of the spreading of goodness. God made us to know him, love him, and serve him. He didn't make us to know the bad guys so we might kill them. 
to love ourselves so, we, so that we don't get destroyed by the bad guys and to serve ourselves. We are made to know God, love God, and serve God in this world so that we might be happy with Him in the next. And part of knowing God is a certain awareness of those that are trying to lead us away from God and a great awareness of the evils of the doctrines, the false doctrines that will destroy our souls. But that's a part of the knowledge. But there are many, many souls, and their name number is legion. There are many, many souls, and more and more every day, who thrive only on deception and destruction and deceit. They feel this the necessity of speaking if it's to speak to destroy someone, if it's to speak to destroy, but they won't speak to stand up for the truth. They won't speak to defend the rights of Christ, but if it is to destroy a person, they happily speak. This was the case of the soldier that, the, the, that came to David, and he thought David would be very happy. He came to David and he said, I was in the battle, and I saw Saul, and he was dying. But he was still alive. And he asked me to kill him. Saul himself asked me to kill him because the life was still in him and he was still strong. And therefore I killed him. And then I took the crown and I brought it to you. He thought David would be happy because he killed Saul. He thought David would be happy because he would brought the crown of Saul. I mean, to, of Saul to David. But David said, How is it that you have touched the anointing of the Lord? This, I think, is one of the temptations of the great evil of Satan Picantism. It is a great evil that destroys and damages the soul. Because we look to the evil of the person, of Pope Francis, or before that Pope Benedict, or before that Pope John Paul II. And we look to the evil of the person, and we, want, we, and we look at you pray, some pray for his death, some pray for that, others some have told me that, they long for his death. They pray for the destruction. This is not of God. But the fact is that, that Pope Francis is doing great evil and the evil must be condemned. But he is still the servant of God. He is still called the Holy Father. And we pray for his conversion. But not only for his conversion, but that he be faithful to the duty that God has entrusted him to be the head of our Holy Church. And in order to do that, he needs to repent of his sins. In order to do that, he needs to turn back to God. But we don't simply wait for and look for his destruction. This is what the situation is in the world today. Many souls are being deceived. Their souls are being dragged down towards hell. Error drags a soul away from God. And this error of looking everywhere for the evil individuals and longing for their destruction, and speaking only about their destruction, this is absolutely not of God, and it will destroy souls, our own souls. It is most dangerous, and is becoming more and more prevalent and look at the wisdom of the devil. Today you hate the Pope because he's liberal. Today you hate the modernists because they're bad. Today you hate all of the non-Catholics because they're all wicked and you want their destruction. All the devil has to do is flip the switch and tomorrow you hate the Catholic. And tomorrow you hate the good one and you want their destruction. When it comes to the destruction of the evil ones, you never get around to it. But when it comes to the destruction of the good ones, all of a sudden you get energy, all of a sudden you get power, all of a sudden you get, you get, you, 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 you make necessary sacrifices. And the fact is that this is not the way of God. It is not the way of God. We, we may pray for the repentance of the sinner, we pray for the sinner to return to God. We hold firmly to the truth. We turn on the light of our holy faith. We do condemn the errors and heresies of the modern world. But those individuals that hold these errors and heresies, they shall be judged by God. And we love them all. And we want their repentance and returning to God if they are guilty. And they're seeing the light, the true light, if they're not. In both cases, we want them to see the light. God is testing. He's testing our souls. And as the world crisis of the church gets worse and worse, there are more and more and more of these wicked fireflies all over the world. 
more and more and more. They are increasing by legion every day. So that we are seeing in fulfillment of the prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the time will come when they kill you and think to do a service to God. There are souls that thrive only on wickedness, and thrive only on evil, and only on the destruction of others. And that is their only light. I've got to turn on the light. Yes, to an extent, yes. But not like this. No. So in any case, remember that we must pray for the end of this crisis in the church. Pray that it come quickly to an end. How long, O oh Lord, how long will thou let this struggle go on? And in the meantime, we persevere in the light of faith. In the life that Christ came to give. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ, he did call the Pharisees a brood of vipers. He did sometimes say negative things. He did point out the evil of Caiaphas and so on. He did that. But most of the time what he did was he communicated the gospel. And the necessity of following him and understanding his ways. There must be a little daily meditation. A little time speaking to our Lord. There must be the daily rosary. There must be a daily speaking to Christ. A daily speaking of the Blessed Virgin Mary and a continual reminder that I am a sinner. Because one of the ways in which we focus too much on the destruction of others is when we forget that we are sinners. We forget that we have turned away from God. We forget that we have difficulties and wickedness in our own lives. And therefore, and we are going to meet the judgment of God just like our enemies are going to meet the judgment of God. And we hope to meet the merciful judgment of God and not the just judgment of God. And therefore, we have to be reminded of our own sins. And one of the ways to fight against this, looking too much to the light on the sin of others, is to turn on the light of our own sins. That's why it's so important to get confession. And to remember that, Lord, I, I know, Lord, be worse than you a sinner. As David said, innumerable are my sins. That's what David said. He remembered the innumerability of his sins. We must remember the innumerability of ours. And then it calms down our consciences. It calms down our souls. It turns down our violence. So that we're not so violent as we're inclined to be. Because violence oftentimes towards others, excessive violence towards others, there's a time of necessary, necessary for some violence, but the excessive violence towards others is usually a covering of the conscience. We don't want the light to be turned on to our sins, and so what do we do? We turn on the light to other sins in order to distract, in order to steal the prey, in order that we might uh, uh, not be noticed ourselves. So beware of this false use of the light. And follow the true, true light of our Lord Jesus Christ. And don't be focused too much on the evil of others and evil of things, but rather on the spreading of the Holy Gospel and the Holy Truth and living according to the faith. Those amen to you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.